The Champion Series hits Hollywood. Andre Agassi short flight over from Vegas. He is in the house. Pistol Pete rolling up in style. Come on, man. Topping it. That was right in. A little traffic Friday afternoon in LA, you know. What are you gonna do? Pretty stylish wheels from Pistol Pete. You can drive that car when you've got two kids, but when you're Johnny Mac and you have six, you need the minivan. You know, I say I was just watching TV. No traffic at all. Just kidding. Piece of cake drive from Malibu, where John has his place here in LA, and the boss, Jim Courier, already in the locker room waiting for the guys. Champion Series in LA. Welcome to the 2011 HSBC Tennis Cup presented by Cancer Treatment Centers of America. First time ever the Champion Series lands in Hollywood. Staples Center always has lots of star power. Nicholson, DiCaprio, Toby Maguire, Denzel. Tonight, the biggest stars of tennis, Agassi, McEnroe, Courier, Sampras. Let's hear from them in our HSBC pre-match interview. John, you played our last event in Seattle. That was your first event in two months. We know that you're coming off the hamstring injury. How's your recovery been? How do you feel now? You know, it's been frustrating. Obviously, anyone that has injuries knows it's, uh, it, it, what does one thing, it makes you appreciate being out there more. And uh, the problem is, is that I'm playing guys like Agassi Sampras, the first match is back. So I got my work cut out for me, obviously. I don't know who's creating these draws, but you played Sampras in Seattle. Now you got Andre here in LA. I mean, talk about two tough cookies on this tour. Um, the, nothing to lose. <laughs> Good luck tonight, John. Thanks. Appreciate it. We'll bring in Andre. Last event that you played was in Boston, and you, you won the title there. How are you feeling about the state of your game? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I got a chance to play a number of matches now coming into this, so I feel pretty good to be back in L.A. playing against the uh, hometowners, uh, John, and if I'm so lucky to get through them, Pete, be good. Yeah, McEnroe, we were talking about the fact this is the 25th anniversary of the first time you played John back in Stratton Mountain, 1986, and his game is really timeless and, and still causes people the same problems that it caused a quarter century ago. Oh, no question. His game can adapt to all sorts of kinds of players. They have that kind of feel, and to disrupt somebody moving forward to back as well as left to right is a big asset. A lot of guys have a hard time moving forward, taking a ball low and being offensive, and so he can neutralize a lot of power, and I gotta make sure I'm hitting my shots well tonight, but uh, I'm sure we'll have a good time. Those will be the two players in our first semifinal, and it's Pete Sampras with the commanding lead in the Champion Series point standings right now. 600 over Michael Chang. Jim Courier will play in our second semifinal. You want star power? We've got it in L.A. Agassi, McEnroe, Sampras, Courier. It all starts next. The 2011 Champion Series is brought to you by HSBC, the world's local bank. By Cancer Treatment Centers of America, winning the fight against cancer every day. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Let's take you inside the Champion Series locker room. Pete Sampras getting a little treatment from Gary Kitchell. How'd you do the chin? Ten years old or something? I was five in the front of a sled. And so, just... Snow, snow sled? Just let me finish! <laughs> Sorry, let's start over again. <laughs> you get that scar on the back. I mean, come on, give me detail. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. All right, so you're going to be talking to yourself. So how'd you do that? This is too good. No, I'm on nothing. That's <laughs> We're done. All right. Max. Oh, what did I miss? Yes. Yes. Nice. Pete will resume drinking in a little while. <laughs> Can I show you what I think it is? You guys need some of this. All right. I don't know. 
Whatever they just took, let me have. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It just. <laughs> it just was. It just, just, it just worked. Just what it is. You ever get the giggles when you were a kid? Not necessarily with the trainer, I remember, but. <laughs> It was interesting. I still want to know how he got the scar on his chin. We, we know, with a sled. This is our, uh, we'll see Pete later in our second semifinal. Agassi and Mack in the first one, 4 1. Mack serving down a break. I'm still not sure what cracked them up, but I, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that before the show is over. Well, right now, McEnroe's not going to be cracking up because he thought the first shot in that rally that the ball was long. Just Max's second match back. going to say I wasn't crazy about that pattern for McEnroe. His forehand Agassiz's backhand, Agassiz's backhand is so solid normally, but he really overhit the last one. So funny, everybody talks about the Agassiz forehand as being the weapon, but, but as you mentioned, the backhand is, is what he started with before he got to Boletari's. Took him a little while to get the forehand. That was a side that was a little inconsistent, certainly, when he was younger. became the weapon that everyone learned about. But I actually think in the Champions Series, he's back to hitting his backhand a little bit more solidly. His forehand's a weapon, but he's making some errors in the course of these couple of nights that we've seen him play. Andre's played uh, in four events so far in the Champions Series this year. Runner-up in Philly, winner in Boston, losing in the semifinals in D.C. and Minneapolis. He sits in fourth place in the point standings as of this moment. Andre, a little casual, hitting both of those volleys right at Mac and uh, got away with it. He sensed Agassi that the drop volley was coming, got there in plenty of time. A little surprised Mac didn't react to that last volley better. Let's give Agassi another break chance. That's vintage McEnroe. Serve lefty out wide in the ad court, get his opponent outside Jeez. the court. Close off the volley in a hurry. How's Mac been moving, in your opinion, based on the, the hamstring injury? Still, to me, a little gingerly. You can see just when he's really stretched out that he's afraid to be full stride. But he still has the great hands, and he's still able to get in pretty good position. That's the part of McEnroe that's timeless and, and that will work regardless of what his stems are doing. I, I mean, I feel like every time we watch him play, it's like a time capsule.
kind of the front end of a home and home for uh, Pete and Andre. This one in LA. <laughs> Pete's hometown. Next event is in Las Vegas, Andre's hometown. This arena is spectacular, Staples Center. If you haven't been here, all the amenities of the best modern building in the country, probably. Game back. He's fired up. He was a little fired up at his first event in Seattle. He leads four games to two. kept it together, but you sense that there's a, the pilot light is on. Well, and that's why this could be a dangerous game for Agassi, is McEnroe, a little bit of momentum firing up the crowd. One thing we've noticed about Andre in his first couple of events on to he is in spectacular shape right now. Yeah, he's certainly the layoff from tournament tennis hasn't affected his his physique in any way. About five pounds lighter than his last playing weight when he retired in 2006. He does have a hip problem that he's going to have surgery on end of this year. But he's playing through it. And he thinks that's going to correct some of the back pain that he's experienced over the years. Believes when he comes out for Champion Series in 2012, he'll have better movement than he has. Mac kind of losing his religion about himself, not not the umpire. Couple of bad errors he's made in this game on a backhand return, and then that last backhand, you can see how frustrated he is. Is that, is that a microphone picking up his ball bounce? That's what it was. <laughs> Either that or he's throwing it down with ferocity when we weren't <laughs> watching. <laughs> Good work on defense for Agassi in that game. And then finally had the point turned around, and the backhand he loves with a little opening cross court didn't connect. Mack with a reasonable opening here on the Agassi serve 30 all. does not have the backhand dialed in right now. No, Andre. he doesn't. And it's certainly being tested by McEnroe. He's not hitting too many balls to the Agassi forehand side. Help! So much of the McEnroe ground strokes, Jimmy, are body weight transfer. He doesn't have much of a swing, and that was an example of him really just blocking that backhand return back. He doesn't have racket head speed. He has, you're right. His body is in position. He's turned. He's always set. And he's taking the ball at the best possible angles and inside the court. Mack makes his way in, but Andre Good with the backhand pass on that occasion. He holds for 5-2, inching towards the spot in the final. Jim Courier would like to be there as well, making a run down the hall and into the locker room. What's up, boys? 
And the Sampras children are waiting for him there. Continue for all of what? Five days? Yes. I know. Well, you guys are tennis junkies now. It's kind of crazy. Hey! The gang! How are you? <laughs> Family day in the locker room in L.A. Bridget, Christian, and Ryan all going to watch Dad play tonight. Tennis has given me the platform for my life's work, and I see a lot of lives that have changed as a result of the success that I've managed to have inside those those lines. You know, so I'm so grateful for the game in that respect. You know, it's also given me my uh, family. You know, it's given me my wife and, and my children. It's given me this time in my life to, to be with my children as, as they as as they grow and uh, develop. So. Uh, that's another reason why I want to be out here, because it's it's staying connected to a game that has meant so much to me. And so when I look at my career, it's just I'm flooded with so many emotions, certainly a lot of memories as well. What a career Agassi did have from a... It changed so often throughout his career. He was a guy that seemed to not like tennis at times, and he was the elder statesman by the end. And he talks about using the sport as a platform for the other things that he wants to do in life, and, and it's well-known the school and, and the charitable foundation. He just had his Grand Slam for Children concert again in October in Las Vegas. They've raised tens of millions of dollars over the years. The school is now grade 1 through 12, I believe. One of his students helped induct him into the Hall of Fame this summer. And I know that Andre is very eager to have that next event in Las Vegas. And he's talked about being nervous about playing in front of his friends and family and people that have meant so much to him at home. I just can't believe we're going to Buffalo and you're not playing. That's, what can you do? <laughs> Tough to break into this group. John, uh, the heat rising. Didn't like the out serve call. Andre says it was there. It was closer than that. <laughs> Did he do that when McEnroe was looking or after McEnroe <laughs> turned his back? Be wise to do the latter. Now that shot was something that caused McEnroe a lot of trouble when these two played against each each other on the regular tour. That backhand return of Agassiz, when he gets a hold of it, it's tough for McEnroe. He's got to dig up a tough low volley. They met four times in their ATP World Tour days. They split 2-2. We mentioned that this is the 25th anniversary of their first meeting in Vermont. McEnroe winning that match. That they might actually, have been when Agassiz was 16 or 17. He was, 1986. 16 years old. They also met once right here in L.A., or not here at Staples Center, but over at UCLA. Andre winning that match in three sets, and of course, 92 in the Wimbledon semifinals, a straight sets win for Andre en route to his first Grand Slam title. McEnroe in the semis, Ifenisevic in the finals in five. Now that's McEnroe at his best. Taking the ball early, off the rise, no time for Agassi. Both these guys tend to like to do that. Agassi was the first one to take it off the rise and rip the ground strokes, not just maneuver the ball around. Uh-oh. Yeah, I mean, serving for this match, and McEnroe suddenly feeling it a little. 
You, you mentioned earlier that McEnroe doesn't have much racket head speed. I mean, that, talk about two guys on the opposite end of racket head speed. He's just wondering if he's watching it because a little bit of a miss hit there. He's, as I said, McEnroe's working his way into the set, but there's not a lot of time in a one set match. He's a little desperate at this point. In addition to those four matches they played on the ATP World Tour, they were, of course, Davis Cup teammates on that championship team in, in 92. Sort of the end for McEnroe and near the beginning for Andre. They beat Switzerland in that final that year. That day they were on the same side. Today they are on opposite sides and Andre with a match point. Forehand return sales long. First meeting ever between these two on the champion series, and it goes to the younger man, Agassi. Six games to three. Agassi just a little too solid today for McEnroe. Didn't give him many unforced errors to work with. McEnroe not quite playing his best. I think he was a little frustrated throughout. Still just the second tournament back for McEnroe after the injury, and so he's working his way back in. Not enough today to beat Agassi. It'll be Andre against either Courier or Sampras in the final. Let's hear from the guys in our CTCA post-match interviews. 25 years almost to the week after you played this guy for the first time, you told me earlier tonight what you thought of him the first time you saw him in 1986 in Vermont. Well, you know, he's a lot handsomer now. You know, he's got less hair, but he looks a hell of a lot better. So I hope for the same with me. Um, what do you think, L.A.? I was desperate for a compliment there. But it's great to play here, obviously. I wish I'd play better. It's so tough to play Andre. Hits the ball so clean and uh, seems like he knows where I'm hitting every ball. And I, I certainly have my back against the wall. Um, but uh, thanks a lot for coming out. And your winner, Andre Agassi. It may not have been the score line that John wanted, but he's a tough customer every time he comes out. Unquestionably, I played uh, John back as far as, uh, geez, I was 16 years old, almost uh, 25 years ago. And I'll never forget, he was uh, much uh, older and experienced, and, uh, and now he's just uh, older. <laughs> You're playing great ball. You won the last event on the Champion Series that you played in Boston. You're into the final here in L.A. How do you feel about your game? You know, I, I feel pretty good. I've gotten a chance to get a few matches in this month, which is always good. I start to hit the ball cleaner and start to play better. And, you know, tennis is a beautiful thing because you don't have to do it well. You have to do it better in one person. So the next match is going to be... Uh, a, a challenge for me, but I look forward to that. Hometown hero. Usher, playing in front of the kids. Um, I mean, yeah. That's a yes. Not really. Here's the best part. Have they come to see you? Best part is, is his kids watched us play in the finals last week in surprise. And apparently this week, his youngest son, Ryan, was playing with his dad and pretending to be me. He was. Said, he says, I'm going to hit it like Jim. That's what he said.
Second semifinal on the way in L.A. Sampras and Courier in their pre-match routine. Courier. He was famous for that back in his ATP World Tour days. Sampras, an L.A. guy, a little more laid back, kind of a casual jog to get ready. Let's hear from both guys in our HSBC pre-match. Jimmy played Pete in a very tight final at our second-to-last event in Arizona. Tonight, you get him with the added degree of difficulty of being on his home turf. Home turf, indoors, on a low-bouncing court. This is uh, probably Pete Sampras at his best and toughest for me, but I love challenges, Brett, and I'm playing, I feel like I'm playing better and better as the Champion Series goes here with matches under my belt, but I'm going to need uh, some big serving, and obviously I'm going to have to need some big returning against Pete's serve. With that, we'll bring in your opponent, Pete Sampras, on home turf in L.A. Your family is here, a lot of friends in the crowd. Uh, rare to get a, a home game in tennis. Do you enjoy uh, being here in L.A. playing? You know, I do. I, I saw the schedule, and it was L.A., Staples Center. I spent a lot of time here watching Lakers, but to finally play here, I'm excited about it. I got a lot of family and friends, um, so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, so, we'll see. With that, we pick things up that. on serve, <laughs> Courier. Dealing at 2 3. Sampras pumped doesn't really show as much as some other players you might see being pumped. <laughs> Still, I'm really pumped. I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's all relative. Fred Haber and Jimmy Arias with you. Staples Center is the venue. Biggest crowd I believe we've had on the Champion Series this year. This is a uh, tennis crazy town between the ATP event that's at UCLA and the uh, great history of champions who've come from this town. He says he has the best half volley in the world. That time it, it was not good well, enough for Jim. It was a pretty good half volley, but he left the building early. <laughs> he, does, he had to guess one side or the other. Curry had plenty of time to wait till Pete made his move. The one time Sampras lost this season on the Champion Series was his other pseudo hometown where he had a lot of family and friends in Washington. So, you know, this is a chance maybe for Courier. A little extra pressure on Sampras. So far, looks as though we're going to stay on serve. Yay, Courier. Love hold. For Jim, when we talk about the great tennis history in L.A., there's actually a great tennis present off. in L.A., and it's benefited Pete Sampras. You've got Marty Fish living here. You've got Sam Query living here. The Bryans live not far down the road. They've got that training center in Carson. Justin Gimmelstab lives in L.A., and I know a lot of these guys play together and I think it, it, playing with the younger guys would you agree is that keeping Pete's game it's sharp I think it is absolutely that's got to help him players today are so good so athletic Sampras just would have to raise his game to even compete and practice with him and I think he in some ways he has I know Donald Young took a trip out to LA earlier in the summer and had some hitting sessions with Pete and I don't want to get too deliberate on cause and effect but Donald went on and had a great summer and a great fall Called in. Jim almost surprised that it was called in. Pete wants a replay on the Jumbotron. Where's my home cooking? No. Uh -oh. Little bit of pressure on Sampras' okay. serve all of a sudden. And on the Sampras serve, 15.30 is like a federal holiday. There's a little bit of pressure. Usually steps up and hits aces at this point. Just a mild kick out wide and the volley into the open court. 30 all. You know, the split step way behind the service line, as you see. But then once he saw the ball floating, he kept going forward. That's something you need to learn at home. Don't just split step and wait for the ball. 
You said that's why he's become such a good half volleyer because he well, is a little because casual. He is casual on the serve and volley. 40, he's always 30. been a serve, and then I'm going to clean things up. Second serve ace for Sampras. Curry, you're not crazy about the call, but it did look good to me. Although, according to Courier, it was well out. And that's how quickly 15-30 turns into 40-30. Did that guy yell, come on, Andre? He sure did. Sanford doesn't look that excited about it, but he's not sure how to react. Boy, Pete hit a backhand volley from about three steps inside the baseline, carved it beautifully on serve for Senna. New balls for Courier at 3-4. 15 left. Some question about whether or not there were new balls, always after the first seven games. These two met in the 93 Wimbledon final. Their lone meeting in a Grand Slam title match. That was Pete's first Wimbledon, first of seven, second Grand Slam title overall. Pretty tough ask for Courier against Sampras on a grass court. That was a big advantage. Obviously, for Pete, they had some classic Grand Slam matches. Courier. Yeah. Seems as though Sampras almost always got the best of Courier. Courier had some chances, some five setters, some two set to love type leads. Jim did beat him at the 91 U.S. Open quarterfinals, 94 French quarterfinals. Yeah, let me qualify my last comment with at the French big <laughs> edge for Courier. But that 91, that was part of that two to three year stretch where Jim was just zoned. 91 French, 92 French, 92 Australia, 93 Australia. He was runner up at the 91 US Open. 93 French and 93 Wimbledon. So all in that three-year stretch, four Grand Slam titles and the finals of all four slams. Yeah, that forehand was so dialed in for Pete in Seattle as well as we've seen him hit it all year. And a couple of errors today. Again, the family, crowd, a little extra pressure maybe. <laughs> Sanford has not looked quite as sharp. Oh. Gyrated his whole body around to switch from the forehand side to hit the backhand volley and netted it. 
Very tough well. to come up with the touch on that particular shot. If there's any nerves at all, he doesn't have much, but all of a sudden, 30 all this is an important point. Staples Center seats over 19,000, Jimmy. I know these guys have played in big arenas. Maybe nothing as big as this. How big an adjustment is it, you know, just with the visual backdrops and that sort of thing? It can be difficult, although this court looks set up pretty nicely where it's, it's nicely confined. Sampras trying to give the hometown crowd what they want to see, and that is a victory Sampras from him in a matchup against four. Andre Agassi in the final. He's a game away. They're head-to-head, -head, as you suggested, pretty lopsided. 20 meetings, just four going in the courier direction. Having said that, I, they had some awfully tough matches. It just seemed that serve of Sampras would make the difference in the big points at the end of matches. <laughs> there has been a lot of playfulness with the ball kids on this tour. He doesn't like that at all. And he might have a beef. Fifteen low. What was that? The linesman said, hey, I gave you one, Pete. <laughs> Didn't work out as Sanford misses the second serve return. Such a great example of Pete stepping in and neutralizing that kick serve of Jim and then of the next one. Well, he had the shot he wanted, that short mid-court forehand. As we saw him doing that against Michael Chang in the previous event, really stepping in severely on the second serve return. Used to do that on the regular tour with mostly a chip in charge. Not so much the rip in charge that he's now able to show us at least a couple of times. Hitting the topspin backhand with a lot more confidence these days. Got that black on black Babylon racket. Was ready to run around the backhand to hit the forehand and ended up getting a kind of a neutral forehand. Wasn't prepared. Time Grand Slam champion, world number one. Five games all. For 286 weeks, one more than Roger Federer has, and it's a little dicey that well, Roger will ever get that extra one. Federer's down to four yeah. now. Finally picked up his second title of the year in Basel, his hometown. Federer, in case you'd like to compare to Sampras as you take another look at this one. 68 career titles, Sampras 64. A lot of areas where they are compared to one another. It's somewhat surprising that, that Pete leads the number one. It seemed as though Federer was number one forever. They both had that run of essentially five years 
where they were number one without interruption. 30 low. The one area where Fed has Pete, and it, it stands to reason, is prize money. Yeah, that's, we need to get inflation adjusted prize money numbers. Indeed. Uh, 40 low. I think the figure's 43 million for Sampras, 63 million for Fed. We won't be holding a benefit for either guy. Damn, <laughs> Sampras. Aw, oh, you son of a. I, I don't know what the next word after that was. I, I can take a guess. On serve. Sampras leaves the game. Jim Courier serving to stay alive in this second semi. Fifteen low. They've met four times on the Champions Series. Sampras leading that head-to-head -head three to one. Serve and volley from uh, the Rock. I like that strategy against Sampras once in a while. Don't let him get away with feeling comfortable just chipping the return back on the backhand side. Make him feel a little pressure from, from that backhand return. <laughs> Definitely do it to his backhand. <laughs> well, if you want to not get tattooed, possibly, with the return. The forehand of Sampras is when he connects. is still awesome. That is not an easy volley right at his midsection. A couple of times now, Courier has gone at the body with power when Sampras has come to the net and hasn't worked yet. Sampras has handled it well both times. 30 all, two points from the match. Sampras. That was another attempted rip and charge. Catches the tape, Sampras. Would have been hard pressed for Curry to come up with any type of passing shot. Had that return gone over. Yeah. Curry. Forehand flies, hold for Courier, and we will have a breaker to decide the spot in our final Six. match against Agassi. This is where we've been so far on the Champion Series. Four wins already for Pistol Pete. Three of them on this page. Last night in Seattle as well for Sampras. He's, he's been a little too good. He's in some bit of pressure today. Courier hasn't wilted. 1-0. It's been Sampras. a bit of a serving duel. But uh, Pete did a lot of damage over the years in tie breaks. They made other players nervous. These were his kitchen. Well, also because he just keeps winning his service point, service point. You feel that pressure. You can't give up one on your own serve. Right now, you guarantee a courier's thinking about it. Oh. One off. Pete is playing an absolute style of, I'm just going to crush the return. And I, one of them's going in, baby, and I'm getting the mini break. Disconcerting feeling when you're Courier because you know now he's going to take another big swing. Two one. Sampras. That's what happens when you have that disconcerted feeling. You know that big runaround swing on the previous second serve was in his mind as he delivered that one. So the mini break to Sampras. Another. Volley that he 
fends off his hip. Did he hit that with his hip? Because it <laughs> didn't seem as though his racket was there. 3-1. Even Sampras is trying to check it out, see how he exactly hit that volley. Is there some bad blood between these two we don't know about? Because Courier keeps going after him when he comes in. I think the bad blood we saw in that career head-to-head, 16-4. That'll give you some bad blood. 4-1. Sampras. And just like when he gets the break of serve in, in the set, Puts it into cruise control, same thing in the breaker, 4-1, and what a great feeling it must be to say, all I've got to do is hold my serve when you've got his serve. 4-2. Samper. Jim Curry is still in search of his first Champion Series title since Charlotte 09. This is the winningest player in the history of the Champion Series. Nine titles, 81 match wins. But there has been a drought for this man, the three-time year-end world number one. And unless he can do something special in the next two minutes here, that drought will continue. Conversely, Pete's Champion Series record, an astounding 26 and 3. <laughs> 8 and 1 this year. What do you do about that? You say great serve, good volley. 5 3 for you. I mean, there's Five, three. not a lot you can do. Pretty good return from Courier, really. Sometimes against Pete, you got to guess on the return. Like that. Courier was actually there. He had guessed right, and you have to make it in that situation when you, when you have leaned the right way. So match points here for Sampras. First two will be on Courier's serve, and then if necessary, he'll get one on his own. Difference in this tiebreak, just that one double fault from Courier at this point. And now with the second serve, you know Pete's going to take another big cut. Right on cue, Sampras racket to the ceiling. A winner in his hometown over his longtime friend, rival countryman Jim Courier, 7-6. Typical Pete Sampras set, served too well, took Jim some Curry. risks on his opponent's serve, and, and just enough in the end to win Pete a tie. Sampras. Break. And so the folks in L.A. will get exactly what they came to see, a Sampras Agassi final at the Staples Center. Let's hear from both guys in our CTCA post-match interviews. Jim, you hit some pretty big ground strokes. You hit some blistering passing shots, and it seems like he was just all over the net all night long. Yeah, with, with Pete, you know, you have to fight fire with fire if you let him get on, uh, get on top of you with the a service break earlier cook so I was really taking good care of my serve today I was trying to throw him off with my personality that didn't work <laughs> I mean I had through serves I threw forehands I threw one-liners but at the end of the day you know you get you get into a tiebreaker with Pete and he has the ultimate advantage because he's got the greatest weapon the men's tennis has ever seen with the serve both first and second so you're up against it and uh, you know I'm, I'm glad I played well but I'm disappointed I lost of course thank you Jim congratulations Pete Sampras Pete, you have been dominating the Champion Series so far this year. This is a chance for your fifth win on tour. This is event number eight. Pretty decent ball you've been playing. Pretty good. I, I just want to start off by saying it's nice to have people at Staples. It's been a little dark lately. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a long year. But uh, as far as the tennis, yeah, I'm, I'm playing pretty good here, serving well. Uh, playing Jim was tough. He was... He's a smart player. He does a lot of good things out there. And uh, got an another opponent here, an Andre Agassi. So I'm ready for you, Andre. Lays down the gauntlet for the final. Pete hit a pretty nasty forehand winner on match point against Courier. We went into the locker room and asked Jim about that killer winning shot. 
I think Pete just kind of closed his eyes on it the way that Djokovic did when he was down match point against Federer in the U.S. Open and just hit, uh, quite frankly, uh, a fantastic shot, but let's call it a low percentage shot. But that's how Pete beats you all the time. He'll miss that shot three or four times in the match, and you're sure he's going to miss it. And then when the moment that it matters most, Pete's got an uncanny ability to make those shots and to put you under pressure. And there's nothing I can do on that. I mean, I had a, a solid serve at his body. He ran around it and just stomped on it. So, um, you know, he got me in a tiebreaker last weekend. He got me this one. But I'll get him. I'll keep coming. No doubt the gym will keep coming, but right now it's the rivalry of the generation. Sampras, Agassi for the title in L.A. next. Time for our Geico backstage pass, some behind the scenes access on the Champion Series. I thieve in my Turner grip. I expect him to leave some money in the tip jar. Jesus. Don't ask me any questions, Kitch. Whatever you do, don't ask me any questions because you'll answer them for me. Loosen up the arm, get ready for that famous lefty swinger. <laughs> McEnroe is losing it out there. He just won a game. It looks like he won Wimbledon. Johnny Mac. You're looking good. He's ready to go. Do battle. No boxing. Remember, uh, no boxing. Was that Charlotte? No, you and I won. Oh, she did box you a little bit. He actually got me right in the... What, what did you do? I slapped you. I cut you. Slapped, you come out there. I know. I got, got my work cut out for me today. That's all right. If I can beat him in his home territory, I can beat him anywhere. <laughs> It'll be a tall order tonight. Andre is popular everywhere he goes, but his opponent might be a little more popular tonight. Pete Sampras playing just miles from his house, renewing their great rivalry. We spoke to Pete a little while ago about how much he enjoys playing on this champion series. We deserve it. You know, we've worked hard our whole careers, and now we're sort of enjoying it. It's not as stressful or... Yeah, our guard is down a little bit. Um, as competitive as we were back in the day, I mean, now we're sort of relaxed. You still want to play well and be competitive, but it's not like it used to be. Uh, but it's good to catch up with Andre and Jim. Um, we fought for some titles, but we all got along quite well off the court. And we're, we're sort of really way past our primes. We're 40 and just sort of just enjoying life a little bit. Uh, the days of competitive tennis are over for us. and. Just to be part of the series is, is exciting for me, and uh, so far, so good. I bet it'll be competitive tonight. 34 times they've met, 16 in finals, 9 in Grand Slams. They do it again tonight in front of the crowd in L.A. Sampras, Agassi, next. Ready for our final, Aaron Vandenberg Mortal of HSBC Bank going to do the ceremonial coin flip. So much history between these two men, and it will get renewed right here and right now. Agassi to begin on serve. See these two playing and realize over the years there was a bit of bad blood between Agassi and Sampras. Is that does that add a little spice to this final between the two? I know we've been saying it's they're enjoying themselves a lot more, and you see the smiles. But I think if this gets tight near the end, we might see something. And I, I actually think you can have both. Right? I mean, is, is it possible that you can have a little bad blood and, a little, and also the respect and the camaraderie? Yes. And I, that's probably where they are at this point. Because I think when they say, and they say it all the time about each other, that 
he brought out the best in me and vice versa. I don't think that's lip service. I, I, I know that, I think that they really believe that. But there is a little extra glance, perhaps. Yeah, did you see the, that? Did yeah, you right? see that little look from Sampras after hitting that somewhat mishit winner backhand return? Yeah. A healthy amount of tension never hurt a rivalry, and if there is some here, so be it. A reminder to help out the USTA serves organization wherever you can. It's the charitable arm of the United States Tennis Association. If you'd like to donate, text the word serves to 80888. Sampras's first service game of this final. Already four titles Fort Lauderdale, Philly, Surprise, Seattle. He already has a 600-point lead in the Champion Series standings. A win here would pretty close to ice the number one position. The way the rankings work is your top six tournaments. Correct. He would have five wins. That's, that's going to be tough to top. That brings back some memories. Yeah, that's... When these two play, it was always a bit of a guessing game for Agassi. If he could lean the right way, you'd see returns like that. It just seemed to deuce or break point. He wouldn't lean the right way. You'd see that. That's their career against each other in a nutshell, the last two points. Agassi was always a guy to me that he was susceptible to being aced because he did like to, to make a quick move. And that's what had to be the demoralizing part for Andre about playing Pete, is that he, he could play his best ball, he, he could be dialed in, and still be neutralized by this thing that he had no control over. Exactly. He would win, when he was playing his best, Agassi, he would win virtually 80% of the rallies, of the baseline points. The trick was but, getting into a rally. Yes. And Pete always did seem to have that ability to when it was the most important moments. That's when he would come up with, if he was going to win his 20% of baseline rallies that he won, they would happen to be in tie breaks or in big moments. And you know, from a, a macro perspective, it was that frustration with Sampras that caused him that dip down to 140 in the world. And he had that great 95, 26-match win streak entering the U.S. Open. He makes it all the way to the 95 U.S. Open final, playing the best ball of his life. And he still can't beat this man. Lost to Sampras in that final, and, and in, it, in his book, he talks about the demoralization of that causing him to kind of spiral downward for a time. All the more impressive, really, for Agassi that he got it back and played for such a long time at such a high level. Don't forget, Agassi was, he's still playing with today's players. He played the Federer, Nadal, Murray sort of era. 
won more slams after age 29 than he did before. Five after. Break chance here for Sampras. Wild forehand from Agassi. Sampras draws first blood. This is an eight-game pro set final, so a lot of time for Andre to make up the deficit, but you hate to have a deficit against this man. You certainly do, so not a conventional set where Sampras would cruise from this point on normally. Not a good sign when he's acing you with his second serve either for Agassi. We've seen that a bunch on this tour, Pete playing a high-risk brand of tennis, and it's worked for him. Oh, he missed it. The first volley was insane. Yes, it was. Crushed return from Agassi. That was just all reaction from Sampras. That was almost another insane pickup from Sampras because that was a half volley that he actually hit with power. Caught the top of the tape. It's a chance for Agassi here at 30 all with a second serve. Indeed. Backhand return to the charging Sampras forces the volley error and a break point for Andre. Cruel. Again, nothing you can do. I don't. I mean, that was a great return for Magacy off a big first serve. Not quite. Agassi really seems, he always has a smile on his face when you watch him play out here in the Champions Series. He's used the expression in interviews a couple times, playing on my terms, his terms. And I think that he's enjoying the game again. You spin your serve in at your own peril against this man. Yeah, got out to it nicely. Had to hit a winner from that position in the court or the point was over. Came up with it that time, Agassi did. Oh, I it. <laughs> Third break chance of this game. Third saved by Sampras.
and then in Sempers. You know, you've talked repeatedly about Sampras' casual net approach, and he'll get away with it against some guys. He won't get away with it against this guy. He has at times, but you're right. It's In general, it's not going to work if Agassi guesses right on the return, which he did that time. It's a bit of a guessing game when these two... When Sampras... Uh, sir, there's a the wrong guess, and it goes back and forth. But it would be tough for Pete, even if he served and volleyed, not casually, against Agassi because of where Agassi stands to return. He takes the return so early, a hard serve comes back to you so quickly that you wouldn't have time to get in very close. Could Pete serve and volley with success in today's game if he were playing? You know, I haven't seen the guys have to deal with serve and volleyers. It's hard for me to answer. Everyone seems to play the same style, and the couple of guys that do serve and volley are six foot nine, six ten. And it's the serve really that sets up everything else. So fends off a handful of break points and does hold for three one. You know there are five statues outside this building, Staples Center. Wayne Gretzky, Magic Johnson, Jerry West, Oscar De La Hoya, and famous Lakers broadcaster Chick Hearn. Thinking about great LA athletes. Does this guy get one one day? Unless you don't consider tennis the biggest sport around, he's maybe the greatest tennis player of all time or one of the top couple. Love it. So yeah. certainly he would deserve it. And I know he didn't play here in this building, but for that matter, neither did Wayne Gretzky, neither did Magic Johnson, neither did Jerry West, and Oscar De La Hoya had a fight or two. But uh, I'm just saying, if this is the well, de facto Hall of Fame for LA sports. If it's just for the Staples Center, I guess now he has played here. <laughs> Just the thought. Call going against Andre and the crowd behind him. <laughs> that was a let called, actually, that nobody heard. And it got to Agassi a little. It's tough mentally to, in your head, you're already at 15 all, and all of a sudden you realize, no, I've got to play that point again. Break already in Sampras's ledger, looking for a second. one-two punch from Agassi with the wide second serve setting up that short forehand. three different times. And wasn't it Sampras that was yelling at him no. during the points? It sounded like it. I think it was somebody from the crowd. I might be wrong, but... It's 
just wide. Oh, he thought he had it, Andre. That was great hustle from Agassi. Covering the drop shot. And then the attempted tweener lob. He thought he, he had thought it. thought he had it, exactly. <laughs> Been a frustrating game for Agassi. Thought he had an ace, they didn't give it to him. Thought he had the tweener winner. And that chip was too short from Sampras. <laughs> Break point saved. for a broke forehand into the net. Agassi fends off break points and holds. One break for Sampras. The mic issue rears its head again. That wasn't the mic, that was just a huge <laughs> serve from Sampras. That's what Pete's serve sounds like. Amplified. They'll take a let. That's Sessi. That new racket. I would, I would just be flexing. Turn from Andre, kind of a swat forehand. little slap. Yeah. He's, uh, that's his forehand's changed a little bit in the last couple of years. It's a little slappier, a little less consistent, but he's hitting it well here. Interesting to watch these guys battle themselves. They know what they want to do sometimes, and the muscle memory is there, but the execution isn't always there. Executions there. All of a sudden, Pete's stretching his leg as if he's slightly injured. So what does he do? Serves a kicker and then crushes a forehand. He doesn't want to be forced to move from the look of it. Yeah, he is uh, favoring. Hard to tell which leg, but there's something going on. And it's bugging him on the serve. Oh, that was much less leg in the serve than normal for Sampras. Markedly. I guess he's able to take advantage, not be on the defensive after a return to serve. Well, what does that tell you? That he has no leg bend whatsoever and still fires an ace. It tells you that, as I said, I think he's double jointed or something in that shoulder. He gets such a great Center flick. It looks like his left leg, which is the one you do on your serve, you're jumping and landing off that leg. Still managed to hold serve as a 4-2 lead, Sampras. <laughs> uh, 
Andre very particular about the ball kid placement. So we're going to keep a close eye on Sampras and the leg, and this is one of those situations where up a break on the Agassi service game, you would think he'd conserve. Looked like it in that point, didn't it? It didn't move when he got a first forehand. He could sink his teeth into. He let it fly. Yeah, even stopping on the lateral movement seems an issue. Okay, so this match has now taken a, a turn. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Gary Kitchell, with whom Pete was all about laughter earlier tonight, uh, out here paying Pete a visit before. That's true. He, he only got to his right leg for the stretching because of the... Because of the laughter that it ensued, so maybe that... Left leg took the strain now. Wow. Still, if you're going to play somebody with only one wheel, it would, you would not pick Sampras as the guy to play against because of shots like this. I also think of his history playing wounded, and I think to that 96 U.S. Open quarterfinal against Karecha when he was ill and throwing up in the planter at the back of the court. He was dead to rights in that match and found a way. So Andre holds there. We'll see what the deal is with Pete's leg when we come back. All-time earnings on the ATP World Tour. Roger Federer upping his total past 64 million this year. Somewhat surprised to see Agassi down at 31 because he's, he played for such a long period of time. Djokovic at the bottom of that graphic we showed you with 30 million. I think 28 of it was this year. Not quite that much, but boy, what a year he had. He's also just 24 years old. And I, I've heard people, and I don't know how accurate this is, they say take that number and multiply it by five for what they earned off the court endorsements, exhibitions over their careers. So Probably varies slightly by the individual. Yeah. Andre would, I guess, be on the higher end. Yes. Of So far, Agassi flummoxed by the fact that Sampras' serve is about half of what it normally is right now. He's not using his leg, but he's still accurate, deceptive, still has great pop with his wrist and his arm. How about a love hold from a wounded Pete Sampras? He's dangerous as a wounded player. That's one thing you're going to say about Sam Proceed because he's still, he can serve hard, so hard with just his wrist and arm. Looks like he uh, popped a Tylenol or two there to try to mitigate the pain. We're hearing it's a left quad on Sampras that's the issue. be so injured. Exactly. Starting to move a little better than he was a couple of games ago. I can't believe the Tylenol worked that quick. <laughs> Oh, 
So a love hold and then two points on the Agassi serve. This is a, an eight-game pro set, as all the finals are on the Champion Series. Right about now, Pete's probably wishing that were not the case. serves from Agassi when he needed it. Love third and down and looked as though this was getting out of control with, even with Sampras slightly injured. But Agassi with the game point to at least stage just one breakdown. is it to play when your opponent's wounded? It's hard. You've got to forget about what's going on over there. Concentrate on yourself. Try to just open the court with that play. Go wide, hit big to the open court, make your opponent make long runs, and that's your concentration point. And that's not, uh, that's not cruelty. That's common sense. Yes. Earlier tonight, you saw Pete and trainer Gary Kitchell crack up laughing. Uh, here's Kitch explaining the deal to Jim Courier. I just kind of asked him, you know, Pete, how'd you get that uh, scar on your chin? He goes, you know, it was a, uh, a, a sleigh accident. And I kind of went, really, sleigh? And I said, you know, like, like sleigh, right? He goes, Shut, I, I, I'm telling the story. Well, it just got out of control from that point on. We just, he couldn't finish and I couldn't stop. And, yeah, there's a lot of sleigh rides in, in Southern well, California. Think, going... <laughs> and that's how you lose it in the locker room with Kitsch. We, we all have, by the way, as Andre dials in a forehand return, trying to recover the break that he's been down for the better part of this well, championship match. Is ever since Sampras got hurt, or you could see that he got hurt, it seems as though Agassi's having less fun. He's not smiling quite as often as he was. It's, it's gotten a little more serious. Is that because Andre feels like he should be dominating a guy who's playing with a wounded body? Normally, yes. That's what you feel when you're playing someone wounded. It makes it sort of frustrating. And I guess he's forgotten to have fun. And, and also on the, on the flip side, exactly. When you are the wounded animal, you're not having that much fun. You're trying to sort of just get through it. This go for broke style that he's playing is is working. And he's got a dead spot in the court right there, which didn't do him any favors. We saw that in Seattle once. Yep. 
Advantage. Thank you. However severe the injury is for Sampras, he's battling through it. Still covering the court reasonably well. There's times when he looks as though it's causing him problems, Sampras, but that was an example. That forehand, he moved pretty nicely to it. He was in good position, hit with a lot of power, and that's the kind of stuff, if you're Agassi, you get frustrated. Are you injured or not? Would have expected maybe something on the Agassi side. He's the one that had to play the first semifinal, stop down, cool off, and then rev it all back up for the final. Sampras played straight through. We've seen a pattern of the guys who play the second semifinal having the edge in, in the final. At least early on, getting off to quicker starts, which actually was the case here. Sampras did get out to that early break. Big swing here. Yeah, if he gets a look at one, you would think. Yeah. I guess he with the big swing. Indeed. So the hold for Andre still down a break. The issue's persisting with the Sampras left leg, and he will take a trip off the court with trainer Gary Kitchell. There'll be an injury timeout here at Staples Center. Sampras, a little treatment out of sight of the crowd. We'll find out what exactly the nature of the injury is. Come back to L.A. right after this. Left quad strain is the diagnosis on Sampras. Got a quick treatment from Gary Kitchell during the injury timeout, and he's back out there to give it a go. Jimmy, from a mechanical standpoint, explain what the left leg is used for in the service motion on a right-handed player. It's used for everything, to tell you the truth. You're jumping off that leg, and you're supposed to also land on your left leg. Oh. So the combination, all the stress really is on your left leg serving, and you can see Sampras isn't really using it like he normally does. For normal people, that would be a problem to suddenly not use your legs because it serve is all rhythm. You need to be loaded and going up at the ball at the right time, and it's all a rhythm thing. Pete's rhythm should change. As you can see, that looked awkward, that serve, but still found the line for an ace. And this has got to be driving Andre Bananas. Yes. He's thinking even yeah, if this guy first. serves with no legs, I can't seem to get it. I can't find a way to... Return serve against him. Forty fifteen. See a bit of the frustration yeah, on his face. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating for him. He knows that I just get in the rally, but Sampras isn't really allowing Agassi to get in the points.
40, Reminded 30. of the uh, 2001 U.S. Open quarterfinal where they played and neither man Net. broke the other Perfect. serve in a four-set match, four breakers Net. that Perfect. Sampras prevailed in. So now the finish line, even in this pro set, is getting closer. An injury or not, the guy holds serve. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's, his whole game level rises on his own serve, even if he's not serving big. It's not going to work. Fifteen. I'm assuming Andre can hold here. It's going to come down to one service game for Sampras. Two points away. shot from Agassi a lot more difficult than he made it look he was moving one way the ball changed directions and he was able to stop on a dime still create all his own pace with that inside out back here at 15 30 40. on the Agassi serve now a point for Andre for six seven Sampras to serve for the title next. Couple of visits from the trainer for Pete Sampras to work on that left quad. Still leads by a break, serving for it right now. Boy, is that frustrating. On a leg and a half, maybe. It's not completely falling apart, his left leg, but leaning backwards, and Samper still able to produce a winner forehand with plenty of pace. Backhand will still fly on him here and there, less so than in the past. Good that he can still smile. Is the crowd moaning at him? I'm not sure, but that was well disguised drop shot. I normally have a sense or have a feel. This looked 30, like his 50. normal forehand till the last second. <laughs> and Andre's probably thinking, I should be doing that to him. Exactly. Right now. 40. What do you want from me? Right. 
40, 50. Three points off the return error, and just what Sampras needed, a quick one match points right here. Overcomes the leg problem, wins his fifth title of the year, beats his longtime rival 8 6. We'll come back, speak with both men right after this. The 2011 Champion Series is brought to you by HSBC, the world's local bank. By Cancer Treatment Centers of America, winning the fight against cancer every day. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, we almost got through it unscathed. I know. Can you believe that? Not entirely unscathed. Pete with the leg injury, but he survives it. Here's our Providia point of the night. We have a tweener. We do, and this was some great hustle from Andre Agassi. And nearly came up with the shot of the day, but just missed it wide. He thought he had it for a second. Went wide. Sampras got the early break in the eight-game pro set final, and he was able to hang on despite the injury. And now, look at the lead, 1,000 points over Michael Chang, five wins on the year. Let's hear from the guys in our CTCA post-match interviews. If nothing else, you scouted out some very talented ball kids here in L.A. Oh, uh, no question. No, it was a great night. Listen, uh, playing and then stopping and playing again, you, you struggle to get into the rhythm, and he took advantage of that early, and then he maintained it. You know, he took advantage, did he? Uh, he just cheap drop shots and all the. <laughs> I completely blame him for the result tonight. Okay. Seriously, you guys have been around the block so many times, but I, I know and we all know how much affection and respect there is between you two rivals and friends for these many years. Can you just talk about what it means to renew this rivalry and, and what you two have between each other that's obviously so special? Yeah, well, there's no question. I mean, I don't know if you call it renewing the rivalry. I think we've always sort of looked at each other with a great deal of respect. We've grown up together. We've challenged each other for the best spot in the world for a lot of years, and it's such a privilege. And one of the upsides to tell Pete in, in front of everybody, I mean, one of the upsides of this whole past uh, four or five weeks has been the chance to get to get to know each other and get to know each other at a time in our lives when we can really embrace what we've meant to to one another's career and it's been a just been a joy andre thanks for letting us witness it all and we'll see you tomorrow night in your hometown uh, i'm looking forward to it revenge andre agassi everybody and here's your champion pete sampras You've had some, uh, some gutty wins in, in your career. Another one tonight. What, what was the matter? Tell the folks what you were battling through. Uh, kind of tweaked my quad. Um, serving volley at age 40 isn't easy. And uh, I just I felt to go a little bit there. I think it was a 4-3 game. And just got tied on me. And uh, it's a sign of age, you know. Just, uh, I, must, I must admit, this, I was serving very hard tonight against Jim and Andre. And I was bringing it. I was doing my best. But uh, these things happen. Would you care to, to share your thoughts on the same topic that Andre mentioned, just what you two guys have shared over these years and what you mean to each other e even today? It's been, uh, it's been incredible. I've, I remember playing Andre in, in Northridge. I was uh, eight, he was nine. <laughs> he had that big Lincoln car with his dad and flying, you know, coming in from Vegas, but I got a 
a ton of respect for Andre uh, as a person, as a player. He challenged me. He was always gracious in wins and defeats. Just a class guy, and um, it's always a pleasure to play him here at Staples. And just a comment to be able to win your fifth title of the year on the Champion Series in front of these, your hometown fans. Well, it's nice. It's nice to, uh, to be at Staples. Thank my family for coming up, my wife and kids, my in-laws, my nieces and nephews for coming out. A lot of friends here tonight. But uh, it's good to be back, and hopefully I'll be back next year. A classy note to finish on for Jimmy Arias, I'm Brett Haber. Let's end tonight with an explanation from Pete's brother Gus on that sledding accident and that scar on Pete's chin. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> were you, uh, you riding with him? No. No. Well, it's the four of us. Yeah, we were on a... I like was a, in the front. We were on the, um, Just, the top oh. of a trash can <laughs> going down a hill, and uh, he was in front and he took the nose diving. No, he was scraping me, scraping and I was frozen, because I didn't feel so it kept... Is this in D.C.? Yes, that's what he's... No, it's in L.A. What? <laughs> well, so I was kind of thinking. Maybe no, it was the same bird. Paul Springs. An inside-out event.